This book is two books in one. The first part of it is the story of how China may or may not perceive us and what kind of strategy they have and the debates that go on in China. A lot of it's based on interviews either with Chinese high-level defectors who came out and are now in witness protection programs or Chinese I met during my duties in China, which is part of the second book, the second part of the book, which is American strategy such as it was toward China. The reason I wrote the book is many conservatives do not know how we got here with China. And Ben, I agree with you, you had a kind of a glib phrase about we tried to do this through engagement for so many years, but it didn't work out. Well, often people don't understand the word engagement's true meaning. We sold weapons to China, a lot of weapons, over a billion dollars worth. Now surely that was Jimmy Carter or some bad liberal. No, Ronald Reagan. Who was the head of Reagan's Pentagon policy planning staff at the time who approved and selected all these weapons for sale? Surely it was some liberal idiot. No, it was me. And the debates about China at that time concerned, and President Reagan was personally involved, concerned what kind of weapons should we sell to China? They had their list. It was pretty dramatic. Offensive, long range, they joked with us. They'd say, look, we don't want second generation technology. We want your best technology. And to a high degree, we sold them that. There's something called a Mark 48 torpedo. If you're a naval person, you know what that is. That was on the list of the Chinese. Yes, Secretary of the Navy John Lehman, a great conservative hero, flew personally to China to present them to the Chinese Navy. And that's just part of it. An idea that came out of Nixon and Kissinger was China is a great espionage power. They know how to conduct spy operations. They know how to influence people around the world. Why not work together with them on some joint covert action projects? Who in the audience here, please raise your hand, thinks President Reagan said, no, no way, we can't do that. Put your hand up. Oh, this is a smart audience. The United States, according to open sources, provided nearly $2 billion to China for weapons to use in covert action programs around the world. Do you have any idea what this means? It means the CIA and the Pentagon were working with their Chinese counterparts in various places around the world. You can, uh, as the Chinese say, tui ce chu lai, you can infer from that what must have been the level of common thinking and partnership between our two national security organizations on our side, Pentagon and CIA, and then on their side. We all became buddies. There was late night drinking, all kinds of adventures around the world. Recently, it was declassified that Jerry Ford and Deng Xiaoping had a meeting Mao was in a second meeting the next day. Jerry Ford said, we're trying to have a covert action program in Angola. Can you help? And Mao said, basically, would tanks help? And Jerry Ford said, yes. The Chinese sent 32 tanks to Southern Africa. So this is not engagement. Engagement to me means our ballet from New York goes over to Shanghai and performs Swan Lake and the Chinese ballet comes over and performs the Red Detachment of Women. That's engagement. Or students go back and forth. Wasn't Confucius great? Yes, he was great. No, that's not what it was. And we decided, since all this was top secret at the time, we decided on a phrase we would use, a euphemism, to describe it. And you'll see it in a lot of public literature. Security cooperation. Now, who knew it was at this level in my next book, I'm going to go into even more detail because CIA and FBI removed some good stuff from my last book, and I'm going to try again about the level of U.S.-China cooperation. Now, part of that, you've all heard about Dr. Fauci and the Wuhan laboratory and 
this Peter Daszak and this money going in and what? You know, this is terrible. Wall Street Journal yesterday had an editorial. Where's the subpoena for the Wuhan laboratory? They mean Peter Daszak. The project with the Wuhan laboratory is one of hundreds of projects that our government has with China. It's not some big terrible thing. It was the decision of seven presidents. It's never been undone. And in your book, Ben, if you want to know about President Trump and China policy, it was my honor and pleasure to list some of these programs to him in the Oval Office, and I cannot characterize his reaction to you. It's not polite. <laughs> and then he would grill me about, how did this happen? He, I'm leaving out some of the words he would pepper his sentences with. So that's why I wrote the book. How did this happen? And I haven't explained it today, how it got started. But if you go today to the US Embassy website in Beijing, for the embassy in Beijing, you will find it's the largest embassy in the world, 2,300 officials. 50 federal agencies are there. Each one has kind of an assistance program to help China. Now, the Congressional Task Force, Republican Task Force on China, got on to some of this. They passed a really shocking, harsh, tough, you know, anti-China measure. I'm sure the Chinese are quivering in their boots. They've demanded that the Comptroller General get a list of all these federal programs and the amount of money being spent. So, yes, at the level of prescription and being good conservatives, we can demonize the hell out of China. The ex most extreme, I think, maybe others disagree with me, Gordon Chang has gone the furthest. Gordon Chang frequently on Fox, and I like him very much, says this is Nazi Germany all over again. We've got to shut off all trade, close all our embassy and our consulates, have no more exchange programs of any kind, you know, total. This is macho man. Steve Hilton has called for, many times on this TV show, called for a total boycott of China. Genocide of the Uyghurs, what could be more evil? Is there any real power to stop the Olympics? No, there isn't. So what you see in Washington now is the structure of the last 40 years of engagement remains in place. The people, the units, the framework, the way of thinking, Above that, and easily accommodated by Joe Biden, is the rhetoric. I had a Basset Hound, who my wife Susan here knows in the front row. The Basset Hound would not follow orders. And we would try to say, bad dog, bad dog. But the Basset Hound kept on its scent, because that's what scent hounds do. With China, they are looking for real punishment or action or steps or something that tells them to pull back. When that's done, they will. But right now, the Chinese tell me, and yes, I have many friends in China, 100-year marathon was translated by the Chinese military. No royalties, but they had a little ceremony for me. <laughs> they make fun of Biden. They say, Biden is plagiarizing your Trump administration policy. And it's true. Trump loved to say, I guess this is my final point, right? This is like 11 minutes. Trump loved to say, if Hillary, Cl if Hillary Clinton had won the election, China would be surpassing us now, but it's not going to happen on my watch. If you're close watchers of Joe Biden's TV interviews, about four months ago, he said the exact same words. China wants to surpass us, but it's not going to happen on my watch. The Chinese reaction to that is to laugh, because they don't expect it to come that soon. But when they do surpass us, I think the level of arrogance they show today is going to be something that we wish for. When they do believe that they're superior to us in a number of ways, we will wish that it was 1947 when the Soviet Cold War began, and we did what? We created the CIA by legislation. We created the Defense Department. We created the National Security Council. World Bank and IMF could not work with the Soviet Union. They're brand new institutions. Right now, there's not a single new institution in our government to deal with China. I think there should be. Thank you.